Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Korlick with Figure It Out Productions. The following video is part of our Quick Shoot series. Hey guys, I just picked up these two Super Nintendos. Now, I've already gone ahead and completely cleaned them and got all like soda and stuff out of them and I cleaned up, uh, you know, the contact points. So both of these systems work, you know, the first time every time I put a cartridge in. So that's not the focus of this video. In fact, if you want to see how to clean a Super Nintendo, I just did a video of that recently. You can go ahead and look at that to see how, how to clean up the plastic and uh, how to make it play games. But if you're at beyond that point and you want to, well, look at the Super Nintendo on the left. Can you see that? See how it's like yellowed? You look at the centerpiece and it's like the original gray color and they're on the side, it's yellow. And then you can see, you know, a Super Nintendo like this, that's kind of what it's supposed to look like. But uh, in the case of this one, the front, I don't know well how, how well you can see that, around the controller ports, you can see it's like a gray color, and then everywhere else it's kind of a darker color. And so this, this Super Nintendo is also starting to turn yellow, at least just in this part. If you have a Super Nintendo that's turning yellow, chances are it's the uh, older model. Um, originally, for whatever reason, Nintendo decided to put bromine in their plastic mixtures. Well, okay, the reason was to um, make it fire retardant, but... Um, it ended up doing this. It reacts with uh, UV light and causes it to turn yellow. So every second this is exposed to light, it's just getting worse. So this isn't helping it right now. Um, whereas later models, such as this one, um, and you can tell it's a later model because it has this sticker. Originally, uh, there's a little plastic piece that Nintendo put in these things so that when your cartridge is in, or, I'm sorry, when the power is on um, without a cartridge, you can't push down on this. Whereas these, they got rid of that piece of plastic and then just put a cheap sticker there telling you not to put games in when the system's on and not to tear games out when the system's on. Um, but yeah, some systems, such as this one, I guess were exposed to too much light in the front. You know, just too much concentrated light turned that part of it yellow, or is starting to. So, you want to solve this. You want to make it look like this Super Nintendo. This is my childhood Super Nintendo. It is absolutely perfect. There is nothing wrong with it, no yellowing on the front. If you look and compare those two side by side, then you can kind of see, yeah, then you can really see the difference. But on the top, they look the same. And then, of course, compared to that one, this one is just worlds better. So, you want to get rid of the yellow, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, and this doesn't just apply to Super Nintendos, it applies to anything that is, uh, you know, has yellowed plastic. Ironically, example here, I have a uh, Super Famicom to. SNES or SNES to Super Famicom game converter. That's what it's supposed to look like. That's what it looks like on the front. That's horrible. Um, this is just a random example of plastic. Just a coincidence that it happens to be Super Nintendo related. Um, this would work on that. It would also work on, you know, if you had a Super Famicom like this. Uh, my Super Famicom's in really good shape. It doesn't have any yellowing on it. But if it did, this would work on that too. So here's what you're going to need. Uh, you're going to need a, uh, you're going to need something called xanthan gum, and I have a couple bags of it here. It's like a baking ingredient. Uh, you usually find this at, like, healthier grocery stores, like Whole Foods or, you know, co-ops and stuff will have this. It's kind of expensive, but, uh, it is supposedly the best, you know, material for this. Um, alternatives include, like, cornstarch, but, uh, most people say, well, this is really the one you're supposed to use. Uh, you will also need, uh, OxyClean. Which you can get at like any you know grocery store, or, or maybe like a Walmart or a Target, etc. This is actually the most common thing in this whole process. Um, the next one is optional. You don't have to do this. This is a liquid glycerin. A lot of recipes call for this, saying add a little bit of this, but a lot just seem to ignore it. So this one's completely on to you or up to you. Uh, I chose to get it just because I figured I'm going to go for the best here if I can. You're going to need hydrogen peroxide. Now, hydrogen peroxide is a little bit difficult to get because over the counter, all they ever sell is the 3% stuff. You can find that at like a Walgreens or a grocery store or whatever. Um, but you need a higher percentage because the lower percentage of stuff is just not really going to cut it. It'll improve it a little, but it, it just won't do what you need it to. Uh, this is food grade. This is actually a 12% uh, hydrogen peroxide. And I got uh, two bottles of it. Uh, I got this on Amazon. Um, a lot of places say you can go to like hair salons to get like a 6% solution, but I tried that and they had, they thought I was insane for wanting hydrogen peroxide, whatever. Uh, so I decided to just go ahead and get the, the better stuff.
You'll also need a box of rubber gloves. Uh, I picked these up at Walgreens. Um, they're pretty cheap. You're going to need these mostly because of handling the hydrogen peroxide. Uh, that is nasty stuff, and you really don't want to touch it with your fingers. Uh, hence the need for rubber gloves. Unfortunately, they're cheap. People may also ask, you know, all right, it's yellow. My Super Nintendo's yellow. I, I can I can deal with that. I, I don't need to buy all this stuff, or I don't need a new Super Nintendo. Why why would I care? It's just yellow, and that's that's no big deal. And if you don't care about the aesthetics, then yeah, that's really not a problem. The other problem with yellowed plastic, though, is that it's not just changing color. You can't just paint over it and, you know, that would solve the problem. Uh, you also can't just scratch it off because it's a chemical reaction that is causing this, and this whole process is designed to reverse that reaction. What's really happening is that, unfortunately, the plastic is actually becoming very brittle. Um, it's going to start forming a bunch of chips, and you can see a few right there. I mean, eventually, it's going to get so weak that just, like, touching it will cause it to, like, cave in and break. And you don't want that, because you want to preserve your Super Nintendo, which is the whole reason you're watching this. So, if you're going to do this, do it right. I'm going to go ahead and first, uh, I'm going to disassemble the Super Nintendo, because you do not want to do all this uh, with the machine completely intact. You have to take it apart and just get to the plastics. Now, the reason you need uh, xanthan gum is because you want to make the uh, OxyClean and the hydrogen peroxide stick to the Super Nintendo. Because um, you actually don't need this for the reaction. Uh, if you were to just mix the hydrogen peroxide and the OxyClean, uh, and just like soak the plastic in it, that would do it. Um, but unfortunately, that's not really practical because you'd have to buy a lot of bottles of hydrogen peroxide. Um, so, you know, and that would get really, really expensive. So there's no reason to do that. So instead, if you mix it with xanthan gum, at least then you can kind of paint it on and just it'll stay. I want to dress this up front because inevitably people will ask, you know, how much does this all cost? I'll tell you right now. These materials together will cost you more than just buying a Super Nintendo. And so then, of course, you go, well, why the hell would I do that? Why didn't I just get a new Super Nintendo? And you'd be completely right. You could totally go and get a new Super Nintendo. That would be a totally rational and logical move. But if you're like me and you're completely irrational and you want to do this and you want to take care of these things, this is what you got to do. But uh, it, it does actually become financially you know, logical if, say, you have a lot of Super Nintendos or a lot of yellow plastic... Or maybe you have a, a Japanese Super Famicom that's in bad shape, unlike mine, and it would actually be cheaper to do this, the Retrobrite method, as opposed to just, you know, well, screw it, I'm going to go get another Super Famicom. So, basically, if you do this in bulk, then it becomes worth it. Um, or if you just want to try science, maybe you like science experiments. But, um, yeah, so, you will also need a lot of sunlight for this, and... I live in a high-rise, so that's really not an option for me, because once the plastic is all soaked, I have to put it out on the ledge, and that would be stupid, because if the wind came along and knocked it off the edge, well, then that, this, yeah, this was dumb. So we're going to go on a little field trip uh, out to the suburbs, and I'm going to do the science experiment stuff out there. But again, before I do that, I have to take a Super Nintendo apart. Okay, in order to get into our Super Nintendo, you need a game bit. Uh, this is a special kind of screwdriver that uses a special bit on it uh, that's designed specifically to get into these Nintendo systems. For whatever reason, Nintendo decided, okay, from the Super Nintendo on, we're going to use these random screws. So you can get one of these on eBay for like four bucks, so do that. Um, you go to the bottom of the Super Nintendo, you'll see a screw port there, 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 and there. So just go ahead and, and uh, remove those, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so once all the screws are removed, you can just lift the lid right off like that. There you go. See the inside. And you can see how deep that yellow is. I mean, this is something they didn't include the, uh, the bromine in, and this is plastic that they did. That's horrible. Um, but we're hopefully going to fix that. So what you're going to want to do is strip down both the lid and the body. Uh, so we'll just start with the lid first. Okay, on the lid, all you need is a Phillips screwdriver, just a very standard one. Uh, and there's a screw there, 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 and there. If you have uh, an older Super Nintendo, uh, there might be a version of it with like a plastic piece right here. Uh, in which case, there'll be like a little white washer. You have to unscrew that. And then once you take this little plastic piece out, there will be this screw hidden beneath it. So 
There are slight variations, but uh, basically they're the same. So just remove all those screws and be conscious of the fact that there's a spring right there that you're going to have to get back on yourself. Um, it's not that hard. You can do it. Um, yeah, just remove all those and then take it apart. Okay, so once all the screws are removed, don't forget you need to have removed that spring. Um, and then your this, this piece will just come right out. And since this piece is in fine shape, we don't have to do anything. Although if you want, you see those plastic tabs back there? If you cut those out, this thing will be able to play Super Famicom games. Just so you know. Um, and then you get down to other pieces of plastic. And uh, we'll take out uh, the, the, the uh, disc... Uh, wow, the cartridge slot lid thing and uh, this other piece just push back remove that and another piece pops right out and then you just see beneath the surface and it's still yellow it actually looks worse than the outside of it it's kind of impressive uh, all the more reason you gotta really cover this thing and uh, we're gonna get the buttons out you kind of push down on these uh, plastic pieces right there and I guess be careful if you have a yellow one because it too much pressure and the case could actually break. And, uh, yep, okay, that's out. And that comes out just like that. And then do the same thing over on this side. Pop it out. And there you go. This is our lid. And, uh, that was the easy enough process, right? Alright, now we're gonna, well, as I look at it out here, this is why you need to do this. See this part right there? It's partially chipped and broken, probably from what I just did. You know, whatever, that happens. Back there, little chips and stuff. The plastic just gets so weak because of that, the, the you know, the bromine. It's just, this is a really good idea to do this because it's going to preserve it, or at least fix it as much as you can. At least at the very least, it'll stop getting worse. So, that's a plus. Alright, now on to the bottom part. Uh, the first thing you're going to do is pull this right here and just pull this little bar out. The eject mechanism will come out, the bar will come out, and this little spring will come out. Uh, then you're left with the board here. I would remove the controller ports right there. And to do that, there's a little ribbon right there. We can just disconnect it. Easily comes right out. Then you'll be left with this part. Uh, so for all this, you're just going to need a uh, Phillips screwdriver. And uh, you're going to... Well, I'm just going to go ahead and remove the screws, uh, which are located right there by the power switch. Uh, right there. There's one there, but you don't need to do that. Well, you might as well. Do this one too. Um, I would say, oh yeah, do these two on the side, right there and right there. Um, then there's one down there, another one right there, and right there. Now there's a possibility you have a Super Nintendo that doesn't look quite like this. Like there's another big box right here. Uh, don't panic. That box is actually, you can, you'll find the screws that are around it and you can disconnect that box. And then it's pretty much the same process. Uh, so just go ahead and remove those screws and take the board out. Okay, so I've removed all the screws. Uh, you'll notice that when you're taking it apart, there's at least four of these silver ones that go in specific places. They go in the cartridge slot on each side, and then the two pieces back there. So just remember that when you're putting it back together. Uh, other than that, the others are all the same size, and they go in their various places. So once you've removed the screws, the power switch part will come up like this, and then the board should just lift right up and out. And there you have it, my friends. That is a uh, Super Nintendo. That's its guts right there. Uh, so put that to the side. And uh, if there's any other little metal pieces, like there is this little thing, and then I guess there's this other plastic piece on the bottom here. You can take that out. But uh, that's the bottom of it. And uh, yeah, <laughs> a little dirty. My bad. Missed some dirt before. So now let's go ahead and look at them both together. Okay, so there you go, you have the two main pieces. Uh, you may also want to do your controller ports, uh, like these are terrible. So in order to do that, pull back on this piece and just kind of get this thing out of the way. And then you'll see there's little plastic clips right there on each side, top and bottom, top and bottom on the other side. You just kind of want to pinch those and it should kind of just pop right up. And let me do it on this side, and there you go. Uh, that part will come right out and that way I can clean this. Uh, be careful of this little piece that just popped out. That goes right there on the LED and uh, just make sure not to lose it because it will just pop right out. But it's easily put back in as long as you don't lose it. Um, if for whatever reason this part is yellow and you want to remove those, well I'm not going to do that but there's little clips there on the back and you could disconnect those and get at it. But it also looks like it's soldered on there so only do this if you're really super serious. 
But otherwise, I mean, just getting to this plastic piece is easy enough. So there you go. Those are the pieces that we are going to work on cleaning. Uh, so yeah, now let's move on to that. Okay, guys, we are now out in the suburbs. How fun is that? Uh, we're going to take uh, our first, we're going to take hydrogen peroxide here, and we need to measure out uh, one cup worth. And don't forget your rubber gloves. All right, so one cup or half a pint, whatever. You mix that, you put that in here, and this is pretty nasty stuff, so like seriously, make sure you have your uh, rubber gloves on, and that'll about do it. I'm going to use uh, a CD spindle thing, because, you know, what other purpose do they actually serve? And uh, I, I did not come up with that idea, though. I, I saw someone else use this and thought, wow, that's a pretty good idea. Um, okay, so now we need our xanthan gum, and we're going to get uh, two, quote, heaping tablespoons of this. And so you'll have to bear with me for a second while I try to get this out of there. Um, all right, I think that looks pretty good right there, as far as I can tell. Have that out over that, dump that in there, and then do it one more time. Okay, and now, now that we have those two things in there, we're going to mix it up uh, by hand. And the reason you want, uh, I think I mentioned this before, but I'll mention it again, you want the xanthan gum in there because it'll kind of mix in there and make it kind of something you can paint onto the systems as opposed to just making it a liquid. So what we're going to do is just kind of mix until all the lumps are out of there, or as many as I can get out of there. Um, yeah, so just keep doing this for a bit. And uh, after uh, a couple minutes of doing this by hand, you're going to want to add uh, one teaspoon of, this is the glycerin, we're going to add that into there, and then we will go on to the next step. Okay, so I've added the one uh, teaspoon of glycerin, and uh, the goal at that point, you're hoping that this will be kind of like a clear gel type of thing to work with. Uh, unfortunately, it's not at the moment, so what you can do about this is you can microwave it. Uh, you should put it in the microwave for about, you know, 15 seconds, take it out, mix it up again, and uh, if it's not enough of a gel, do it for another 15 seconds, but you shouldn't do it for more than like a collective 75 seconds. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so I mixed it for a while. I had to actually microwave it, I think, five times, because, uh, you know, it, it, you, the goal is to make it not lumpy. I even added another like teaspoon of hydrogen peroxide. I'll warn you right now, if you have arthritis, don't do this. This is a really difficult and annoying process that you just have to keep going like this for, but in the end you get something kind of like this that's uh, not too lumpy, so that's good. Um, the next step we're going to take our OxyClean, which is in my case in this little, these little pouches or whatever, and I'm going to have to cut it open and I'm going to add one fourth teaspoon of it into this, and then I'll start to mix. And I haven't done this yet, but my understanding is that it's going to start to react pretty quickly, so mix it in really quickly and uh, then we'll proceed. Okay, so I've added the OxyClean, and uh, it didn't foam up or anything, so I guess that's kind of good. But, uh, yeah, now I think, according to the directions anyway, I guess we're ready to start painting it on, so I'm going to literally use a paintbrush. And I'm just going to kind of dab some, you know, like this, and just kind of start the process of applying it to the uh, Super Nintendos. And uh, I got uh, baking sheets like this. Uh, these are like cake pans, uh, because that way, when you put it outside, you know, it's glass, and the sun can get in from all directions, which is ultimately what you're going to need. So, uh, I guess at this point, just, you know, proceed to get some and just use it as a paint and just kind of get it on wherever you can. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll proceed after that. Okay, I painted everything on. I don't do it sparingly. Put as much on there as you really can get. And uh, once you do a whole layer, if you still have more, go ahead and do some more. So now, at this point, I'm going to take all this stuff outside and put it in the sun. And, uh, yeah, we'll give you a progress report. Okay, guys, I have these things all outside now. And uh, here we go in this plastic tub. Obviously, I just put this out here, so there's not going to be any difference yet. But, uh, yeah, just leave it out in the sun. I've got the front of that one all, you know, set up. This one looks like a cake or something. Super Nintendo cake, if that makes any sense. And then the bottom of that same Super Nintendo. So we're going to go ahead and uh, let them sit for a few hours, and then uh, we'll see what our progress is like. Okay, guys, it's been about an hour. I wouldn't expect uh, a whole lot of difference yet, but um, you can see that the material, I don't know how well the camera's going to pick that up, but it's actually starting to really bubble up while it's out in the sun, which is good because it's reacting. Um, we look over here, you know, we can see that it's having an effect, but actually most notably on the actual yellowed Super Nintendo, it's starting to look a lot grayer. It's not anywhere near this color, 
but uh, it is starting to get better. And um, so yeah, I think that's a good sign. And this is after only an hour, but I still have many more hours to go. So uh, I'll check back with you in a bit. Okay guys, it's been about two hours. And uh, as you can see, this one is still pretty dark, but this was the most extreme example. But it looks like on this side, where I didn't really cover it too well, it's not doing great. But over here, if you look past it, it kind of looks like it is actually changing a bit. And this is the most extreme example, so these are all kind of looking better here. And uh, these, in particular, look like they're changing quite a bit. Um, but at this point, uh, I'm going to flip these each. So I guess I'll just do that right now. Uh... <coughs> Oh yeah, see, take a look at that. That's that color, it's been out all day. That's the inside, what it used to look like. So, yeah, it is actually changing, that's good. Uh, we'll flip this one too. Yeah, look at that. Gray, yellow. And uh, we'll let this sit out in the sun now. And uh, yeah, I'll let you know in another hour or so. Okay guys, this is the uh, hour number three here. And uh, we're coming along. I added some more to some of these, just to touch them up a little bit more just to hope for better results. Uh, well, I don't know if I ever mentioned this, but I included a couple of Super Famicom parts that I just wanted to try and make a little bit shinier. <clears throat> um, front of the Super Nintendo, this one so far looks good, but I won't really know until it's off there. Uh, like I said earlier, I flipped this side, and uh, this side is getting better. I think it's hard to tell what the bottom looks like. Obviously, I don't want to touch it right now. And uh, over here... This one is, you know, coming along as well. I did notice right here, although I don't know how well it's going to show up on camera, the top of these two little pillar things, the inside is definitely looking more like its original color for sure. Uh, so, yeah, you can hear all, like, the bugs and stuff outside. Welcome to the suburbs, everybody. Uh, so, yeah, there, that's where we are at hour number three. Okay, now you can hear a bunch of bugs. Sorry about that. Uh, this is now hour number four, and uh, things are coming along here. And, uh, unfortunately the sun is setting, so I'm just gonna leave them out here for as long as I can and hope for the best. Uh, this was, you know, you're supposed to do this for probably like, you know, six, maybe eight hours. It's only been about four. I'll be lucky if I can do this for another hour or so. Uh, but then after that, uh, we'll, you know, we'll go from there. Okay, guys, so it's been a few hours. Unfortunately, I started this too late in the day, and I haven't been able to leave them out there for quite as long as I would like. But uh, this is about four hours out in direct sunlight. Um, <clears throat> now, bear in mind, obviously, I haven't removed any of the foam stuff yet. Um, so it's hard to tell how good they've actually turned out. But uh, remember earlier, I flipped that, and you could tell that it definitely made an improvement. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do my best to clean these things off. Like here you can see that really yellowed thing is still really yellow. But I'm assuming that it is actually better. So what I'm going to do now is just go ahead and clean all this stuff off. Okay, so I've done uh, one run through. And uh, you remember how deep yellow this was. It's, it's not quite there yet. Um, same with the case. Uh, this is in much better shape than it was. It's much grayer, but it's still not quite the, uh, the right color. I don't know if it's ever going to get there, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this a second time and try to get more and more of the yellow out. See, when you look at pieces like this that uh, only had a little bit of yellow, it's, it's mostly gone. Uh, and I don't know how much more it's going to benefit from that. But with these deeper yellow ones, I think another coating will work. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Hey, guys. All right, so I haven't done a second coat yet. I just came down uh, this morning to look at these things. And it looks like they continued to get better over the course of the night. Like, it's not perfect. That's what it should look like. And that's what it looks like now. But if you remember, it was darker than this uh, last night. So the, the same goes with this case. Uh, you know, it's not... It's supposed to look more like that. and It, it looks like this. But it is definitely improved and it got better over the course of the night. So I'm still going to do a second coat, but uh, that gives me, you know, hope that uh, maybe, maybe we can get this one to look as good as this one. I've done a second coating and I've put the systems back together. Um, this was the Super Nintendo that was in pretty solid shape except for the front, although I didn't bother with a, super, uh, a second run on this. It didn't need it. As you can see, it looks pretty damn good. Um, this obviously was the, uh, or is, the uh, adapter cartridge. This is what the color is supposed to look like. This is what it looks like now. If you remember what it looked like before, it was a really heavy yellow. So this has gotten significantly better, but it's not perfect. And uh, the same goes with the Super Nintendo. If you remember, it was much, much more yellow. Again, not perfect, but 
way, way closer to the original color than it was. Now, um, it's going to keep getting better because I reversed the process, so it's you know not going to get more yellowed, and the plastic is going to get stronger, and actually already is stronger. You can feel it. It, it doesn't give quite as easily. Um, but it probably will not look a whole lot better than this without another coating, which I'm considering doing, but I don't have enough remaining yellowed plastic around to justify doing that yet. But uh, maybe one day I will. Um, but I, I guarantee it would keep getting better every time you did it. Um, so let me, let me give you some tips when you're doing this, because I highly recommend doing this if you have yellowed plastic, but make sure you have enough things to clean, otherwise it's not really worth the money. Um, the tips would involve, other than what I already explained in the video, you, you have to just exercise a lot of patience because this process takes forever. Because once you've actually like made all, made all the stuff and then you put it all on there, you have to leave it out in the sun for hours and hours and hours and hours, like all day. And then you got to bring it in and then you have to wash the whole thing up. Okay, and washing it off is a huge pain in the ass because you have to wear the gloves again and you have to just wipe it all off in the water. Make sure, obviously, there's no electronics. We're talking about just the plastic. Um, it's, it's safe to dump it down the drain, incidentally, but uh, you have to do that. It's a massive pain in the ass to get that stuff to come off the system, um, but eventually you can do it. Water breaks it down, but it just yeah, <laughs> be patient with that part. And then you leave it out um, another day without stuff on it and it'll continue to get a bit better and then that's just one coating <laughs> and then if you want to do it again like I did you have to make it again put it on again clean it again put it back out again it, it just takes a long time but I, I mean the results are really really impressive to me I, I'm amazed this works and you know down the road this this system will not get any worse and I'm totally gonna do this a third time um, when I have enough yellowed plastic to justify it. Because um, you can see, I don't know how well the camera is going to pick this up, but the, 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 this cartridge looks kind of spotty. You know, like there's certain parts that are really, really gray and really, really white, and other parts are still kind of yellowed, and that's my fault for being, you know, uneven when putting it on there. But that just tells me that, you know, areas where it was put on more heavily get the original color, and then other parts don't. And I guarantee that the same would be true with the Super Nintendo, that I could make it even better. So, I, I highly advise doing this, guys. Uh, just be safe about it, and be incredibly patient. Uh, and so I really hope you guys learned something, and uh, thank you very much for watching.